Hey, Josh got it all laid out here. Yeah, getting ready to install our timing set and uh, timing cover. Previously on Caddy Daddy Presents. We got, I see we've got a new seal here. Yep. We've got new gears. We've got a new chain. chain. This came off of the motor previously. Yeah. So it's got a little it's nice. It's got our Cadillac blue on there. Yeah, I sand blasted it and just gave it a quick shot to keep it from uh, flash resting on us. That's a nice new media blaster we've got over oh, there. Oh, yes. That's yeah, very that's handy. Nice, so. Does a nice job. Start by uh, mounting the seal in here. And we got that gently tapped in place. It feels pretty even around the edge here. Yeah, you gotta check it with your finger yeah. here. You know, the little you know super hammer will get it right in there. That's right. And then let's go ahead and look at our ridge where we're gonna have our seal there on our pan. That's another thing to make sure yeah. things aren't getting dinged up. I've bent a bunch of those back. Oh yeah, yeah. Dinged, so. All right, I think the timing's right. We're gonna try install this timing set right here. Sounds good, we got everything mm -hmm. ready to go. Once again, I'm gonna say this is also something that we get from Caddy, Caddy Daddy there, yeah. right off the shelf. So, we've got everything set up in front of the motor. We saw how we installed the cam yeah. and the crankshaft. When you line it up right here, what you'll see is there is a little machined dot on both gears. And so what you want to do is first of all, we, we want, want to see the we want to see the dots. See the dots. So that first, we know yeah. that we got things the right way out. Yeah. And, and then you got your little key. Yep, you yeah, let's go a little bit. And it's just kind of slide them in together. And what there is, there's two dowels on top. And so they'll kind of that'll find its home. And then you got two bolts that have lock washers on there. Mm -hmm. Are we in there all the way, Paul? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Right there. There, there we go. go. There we yeah, go. See, you'll, you'll hear a little snap. And it's best just to slide it together. You can see there isn't much play in that tiny gear on the new one, on the chain. The old ones will get enough slop in them that they're slapping the side of the block and, or the cover. You can hear it. You might hear a. Um, like a sheet metal noise yeah, that it's going against there. Yeah. yeah. So, so then you do that, and then we're just going to go ahead and torque those on, turn those on there. So we're going to go up to the workbench, and we're going to show you how to put the the cover on here. We've got the harmonic balancer. Yep. And uh, let's go ahead. We'll see you up there. Good job. What do you like to use for the, to put I, your gas in on there? I like to use gasket cinch. Okay. Things like this. Isn't that the one with the girl on the, on the can? Uh, yeah, some brands have the girl on yeah. the can. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Hey, 
anything like this, and you'll see in some of the other engine parts here, I don't like gooping things. I think that is one thing that is overdone. Yep. Is you just do it right. This just helps hold everything in place while we assemble it. Mm -hmm. and a little trick too, like if you got an old car with a flathead engine where you have to get in to adjust the valves, mm -hmm. I'll take on the valve cover gasket, so I'll use high tack on between the gasket and the cover, then I'll use the gasket cinch between the gasket and the block. Then it parts easily when you go to into the engine to make your adjustments and you can sometimes get away with reusing a gasket. So basically you're saying it's the two different materials on there and that way it can separate and that way you're not tearing it every time. That's right, so. the gasket will want to stick to the part mm -hmm. that you remove. It makes it easier to clean up. It's easier to scrape a gasket off a part on the bench than it is to scrape it off an engine block. Okay, so you got the oil slinger right here yeah. and that is keyed so you can only put it on one way yeah. but you well, want to make sure it is 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 convex, not concave. Yeah, you want so. the, you want it to be pointing towards the uh, mm. the cover. Mm. What? And how about a little bit more of that just right on that yeah. surface? And I'm gonna put a little bit of oil onto the chain there by hand just to give it a little mm. lubrication initially, because this kind of re kind of counts on oil slinging around to lubricate it, mm. and we won't have that one initially. Mm. You just use a, little, the just use a little, a little motor oil yeah, on just there. Yeah, a little uh, uh, regular non-synthetic. Mm -hmm. Don't want to use synthetic oil on a new engine because it won't let it break in properly. It's too good of a lubrication. So you it's want to slide that on there. Pins. Two dowel pins so you know where it's okay. going to go. You good on your side? I am good on my side. And so you can see that we still have the, the block bare. We're going to go ahead and paint it this correct Cadillac blue um, when we get this a little further together. Yeah. So. You don't have these, like here we have the two dowel pins mm -hmm. that key the cover. If you don't have that on your particular engine, what I recommend is slipping the um, pulley or the balance or whatever mm -hmm. going here that this seal seats on, I recommend just slipping that in and letting the cover find home around the seal. That's, yeah. That's what I do yeah. on, on my Chrysler flatheads and never have had any leakage from the front using that method. Now that this is on here, we're gonna go ahead and put our balancer. That is a original balancer that we put that speedy sleeve on. So I'll just a little, little bit of oil little, on there. A little, little lubrication there, and yeah. I'll give it a little bit on the inside. And once again, there's only one way it can go on. It is the keyed. So go ahead and slide that bad yeah, boy. that's kind of a tight fit. It is a tight fit. So are we going to have to um, go put that in the oven for a few minutes and let it warm up? You know what? That is a good method. You've done that before? Yeah. Okay. yeah so so what, what we're talking about is you can actually change the, the dimensions. dimensions of it with heat. So what do you think? Like engine temperature. Whatever, 200. So let's do about like 225 in here. Yeah, 225 or so. That would be pretty good. Okay, perfect. So we're just going to toss it in there. Cool. Warm up. Let it warm up for about 20, 30 minutes. You think it's ready? Oh, uh, no. Let's check it out. Oh, it looks good to me. Okay, be careful. Don't burn yourself. Pretty hot. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's see how this goes on since it's nice and warm. Yeah, see if that changes that when you hold it. See the whole difference? And that's just yeah. a few thousands. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and torque this after we get a little bit more things put together. Let's do that, but now we've got that on there. Now we got that on there, and we can go ahead and put the pulley on. Yeah, and what's interesting about the pulley is so that mark that you put on there, it really only has a specific orientation. It only fits one way. Yeah. So we marked where the keyway was and where the keyway lined up. This is all going to get another coat of paint. Everything was just given a quick coat 
to keep it from flash resting after we sit, cleaned it up. So, so line that guy up there and there's those little indentations. And it looks like those holes are all equally spaced and they're not. This will only fit one way. Exactly, it's so, deceiving. So, so don't let it frustrate you. Realize that it only goes one way. Line it up at the beginning and that way just like we did and yeah. put that little mark and then you don't have to play around. One thing to note too on those balancers mm -hmm. for 59 this one, there is a definite difference between an air conditioned car and a non air conditioned car. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. We have a different diameter on there. Yes, there's a lot of variations on these cars. And a lot of small details. And hopefully, you people that are watching us will have the advantage of, have taken, of taking your car apart yourself. Yeah. We received this car in pieces, as you saw in the Treasure Hunt episode. It was like we were saying, is a lot of this we, we aim to educate but we're also figuring it out ourselves. And what's so great is we have so much documentation that we're taking our time and researching. Yeah. So, so we can use some of our research, but always look into it, go to your always manual. Always double check and yeah. make sure things are correct for your application. Yeah, and let us know at Caddy Daddy too, because we've got manuals, we've got books. We've got all sorts of documents. All sorts of information. Yeah, so. So check that out. We're going to move on a little bit. Uh, I guess we can start uh, maybe putting some pistons in. I like it. I like be it. the Let's next step. Fine Village is a great organization that gives back to the community. Check it out. You'll see so as well. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Son and Kirsten. We're here at the 2018 Vine Village Celebration, our major fundraiser here that helps fund programs that we run for people with developmental disabilities here in the greater Napa community. Vine Village was founded by my family and another family, each who had children with disabilities in 1972. And we depend on donations from all sorts of foundations and individuals and businesses throughout our community to help fund these programs. And this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. 